Hello, welcome to Storytime. It's Natalie from Westmoreland Cleanways. Now the goal of Cleanways is to keep where we live, Westmoreland County, clean and green when it comes to garbage. And that's exactly what's happening in our story today. There's an old man, the Wardville Wizard, who is frustrated with how dirty his town looks. Let's go find out what he does to fix the issue. The Wardville Wizard by Don Madden. The road to Wartville traveled over a hill, and a neat and tiny house at the top of the hill lived a neat and tidy old man. And this is the story of how he became known as the Wartville Wizard. Every morning the old man looked out his window and watched the birds play and the flowers dance and the trees wave in the breeze. From inside, it seemed a perfect place. But when he went outside, he saw it wasn't. Under the flowers, he found soda bottles. By the mailbox, he saw juice cans and plastic cups and straws. Along the road, he spotted newspapers, candy wrappers, all kinds of trash. Once, he found a worn out baby buggy full of pacifiers. Another day, he discovered a broken toilet seat leaning against the garden gate. So every day, the man became angry. The more trash he saw, the more angry he got. Sometimes he would run back to his house and up the stairs and lean out the window and taking a deep breath, he'd yell, The people of Wardville are slobs. Then the old man would take a burlap sack and walk along the roadways collecting the trash. Day after day, month after month, he trudged up and down the road with his sack. He knew if he stopped cleaning, everything would be smothered under a blanket of trash. Slobs, 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 he grumbled. After struggling up the hill with an extra heavy load one day, he got home and emptied the sack into a big barrel, jumping up and down on the top of the heap, squeezing the garbage so that nothing would fall out. But one plastic lid did fall out, and it even said, have a nice day on it. This was his breaking point. So the old man shook his head in frustration and walked slowly into the woods. He was tired of collecting tired of pulling and dragging, tired of jumping up and down to make the barrel hold more, just plain tired of trash. It no longer helped to yell slobs. So he stopped in a clearing in the middle of the woods and looked up at the treetops. Mother Nature, I've tried to keep your hill and green places clean, but I can't go on. I'm tired. He heaved a sigh and sat down on the ground. Suddenly, soft music played around the old man. And then all was still. Even the birds stopped singing, the bushes and trees stopped rustling. The old man let the quiet wrap around him. It was brief, but when it passed, he knew he had been given the power over trash. On the way out of the woods, he saw a car driving down the road, and a small hand tossed a candy wrapper out the back window. That candy wrapper fluttered to the side of the road and settled on a clump of dandelions. The old man looked at it and frowned. He pointed his finger at it and said, Go back and stick to the person who threw you. The wrapper wiggled. Then it shot up into the air and flew down the road after the car. In the back seat, little Babette felt something hit the side of her face. She reached up and found the candy wrapper on her cheek. She pulled, but it wouldn't come off. That night at dinner, Babette pulled a bandana around her face. She told her parents she was playing pirate. She didn't want them to see the wrapper, since she wasn't supposed to eat candy between meals. Now the same thing was happening all over town. Harvey, when he got home from work, had a can hit him in the back of his head, and it stuck there. And poor Mr. Fulton, well, he was startled when a damp, burnt-out cigar attached itself to his elbow. Oh, and Miss Mabel... Well, she let out a piercing scream when a paper bag full of garbage chased her down the road and stuck to her rear end. Now, this went along for a few days, and poor Babette, well, she was sick and tired of wearing the bandana to hide the candy wrapper. So she decided to go for a long walk, knowing that when she got out of town, she'd be able to take the thing off for a while. But on her walk, she saw the old man and so she snuck behind a bush to hide. She didn't want to be caught without the disguise. The old man had found a pile of 
empty cans and popsicle sticks and cartons. And he pulled a finger, he pointed a finger at each piece of trash and said something. Instantly, the cans and sticks and cartons jumped up into the air and flew down the road to Worthville. Barbette's eyes almost popped out of her head. She waited until the old man had gone into his house. Then she ran down the road as fast as her legs would carry her. He's a wizard, she, she sputtered. A wizard with power over trash. That's why things are sticking to everyone. He's a wizard. When the townspeople had heard Babette's story, they decided to call a meeting. By this time, almost every family in Moorville had been stricken, and some people were in really bad shape. Miss Mabel, well, she couldn't even sit down. One member, the doctor, said, I move we adjourn the meeting and get some sleep. Tomorrow we'll go out to the wizard's place and demand that he remove the awful stick-ons, and everyone agreed. So when the old man looked out his window the next morning, he saw cars and trucks pulling up and parking all around his house. Even the sheriff was there. These folks claim you're a wizard, said the sheriff. They say you've made all, this, all of this stick to them. Let's hear what you have to say. Well, the old man looked at the crowd with a serious and steady look, taking them in one at a time. Finally, he said, hello, slobs. You're angry because your trash has come home to you. You've been throwing trash along the road for a long time, and I've been cleaning it up. I'm tired of cleaning up after you. Every piece of trash stuck to you is something you yourselves threw away. Well, the grumbling and shouting changed to a murmur, and then stopped. A hush fell over the people. Suddenly, a muffled whine came from Jimmy, who was getting desperate. Suppose we promise not to do it again. Everybody looked at Jimmy. All they could see was a large pile of soda cans and popsicle sticks and hamburger cartons and candy wrappers with two skinny legs sticking out from underneath. They, the crowd looked at the old man. They weren't angry anymore. They were ashamed. And the old man smiled. He wasn't angry anymore either. He knew they had learned a lesson. If all of you promise not to litter again and mean it, he said, the trash will stop sticking to you when you get home. Then you can put the trash in the garbage can where it belongs. The people rushed to their cars and trucks. Maybe he's not such a bad wizard after all, someone shouted. When all of the people had gone, the old man walked along the road. The Johnny jump up flowers were lifting their heads. The wild geraniums were beaming and everything was neat and tidy. He was happy because he knew it would stay that way. But he would miss yelling slobs a little, because that was kind of fun. Well, hello. As you can see, I have a slight problem. The wizard found me. No, just kidding. I know I'm not supposed to litter. If you haven't figured it out, litter is when garbage is put where it's not supposed to be. In the story, Wartville Wizard, Litter was found in the country and along roadways. But litter can happen anywhere, in the cities, in alleys, even along waterways. It can even be blown by the wind, like our balloons here, that landed in a lake far from where they were released. The ocean is one of my favorite vacation spots, but it is also becoming full of garbage. Litter that enters storm drains flow to rivers, and then rivers flow out to oceans. This is a picture of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, an area between California and Hawaii where garbage is accumulating. Pretty scary, right? In this story, our wizard was upset by how messy the litter was making his town look. When a place is full of litter, you can't really enjoy it. I know I wouldn't want to go play at this playground. But the problems of litter go even deeper than just looking dirty. Litter is a health concern. It attracts pest animals such as mosquitoes and rodents, and these animals can carry diseases that can make us sick. The litter itself can carry germs. There is also the worry that you could fall or trip and get cut by that litter. Litter is expensive. 
It can cause damage to tires like bikes, cars, or even farm tractors. All this costs money to fix. Even cleaning up litter costs money. In Pennsylvania, we spend over $13 million a year picking up litter along state roads. Another problem with litter, and one that makes me very sad, is how litter can harm animals. Animals can get trapped in the litter, making it hard or impossible to move to find food. I, it can't be very comfortable for this deer to walk around with a can on its hoof. And our groundhog definitely can't go find food. And the bird, how can she fly? Animals also don't have moms telling them not to eat garbage. To them, litter can look just like food. So they eat it and they can get sick, maybe even die because of eating this litter. So in our story, people littered on purpose, not understanding that it was a problem. Now we know it is a problem. It looks messy. It's unsafe for us. It's unsafe for animals. So our number one rule is to always, always throw your trash in the trash can. Glad to see you're still here. Sorry for all the camera changes. I'm new to this video making. So our last slide, we mentioned that we always, always need to throw our garbage into a garbage can. But you know what? That's always easier said than done. Sometimes there just aren't garbage cans around. And this is where our craft comes into place. We're making some trash bags or some litter bags that we can keep in our car so we have easily accessible places to put our trash. So I have two options or two suggestions. One would be just to take a bag with handles, a brown bag maybe from a takeout restaurant or maybe even a gift bag from, from a birthday party. Um, so what I did, I took this brown bag and you know, I thought the picture on here was so pretty. I just colored it in and made it darker. And then I want to protect the bag so I can use it over and over again. So I'm keeping a plastic bag in here. And all I did was attach some clips to the bag so that our plastic bag always stays in place. And then when the bag gets full or maybe it starts to stink, which I hopefully it won't happen in your car, um, you can just pull that plastic bag out, throw it away, and put a new one in. This is great because of the handles to use in, say, maybe the back seat of a car, where you can use maybe the headrest from the front seat and put that through oops, so that now the bag isn't on the floor and nobody can find it. You have it attached somewhere easily accessible in the back seat of the car. My second option or thought here is to make a bag out of a t-shirt. Now this is kind of handy because one, we're reusing an old t-shirt and two, if it ever gets dirty, you can just throw it in the wash. You can always just add that plastic bag to it as well and use the clips. So we're taking an old t-shirt and we're going to tie it on the bottom to make this fringe to hold everything in place. If you don't like the fringe, you can turn the bag the other way and now it's a nice solid bag. So to do that, you're going to need a ruler, a marker, scissors, an old t-shirt. Make sure you get um, an adult supervision or adult approval before cutting up a t-shirt. So what you do is you just take that old t-shirt, lay it out nice and flat. Using your scissors, you are going to cut the arm sleeves off. The smoother the cut, the nicer edge you're going to have on your bag. And you're going to cut the other bag sleeve off. And then also cut the neckline out. And we have the top of our bag. The bottom of the bag, you can do two things. If you're not somebody who wants to spend a lot of time cutting and tying, just take a rubber band, which is hard to see here, but I do have a rubber band in my hand. And you're just going to collect the t-shirt at the bottom and tie the bottom with the rubber band. Now in this case, you're gonna flip the t-shirt inside out so that when you're using the bag, you don't see the knot. So you're just going to flip that band over or tie that band as tight as you can and then flip the bag and nice clean bottom. Or if you want to take a little bit more time and you want to be uh, more of an in-depth craft, 
go for the friendly method. So in this case, you just lay out your t-shirt nice and smooth and flat. And your first step is to decide how big do you want your bag to be. And you're just gonna go out, draw a straight line across there. So I went about four inches from the bottom and I used a ruler to keep my line straight. You're also then going to draw hash lines, hash lines, maybe about every inch. So again, I used my ruler, laid it across the top, and at every inch, I just marked. So seven, eight, nine, I'm just putting a line there. That way I know where to cut. So I'm now going to cut my hash lines up to that black line I made. And you just cut. And cut all of these lines. Again, remember the smoother the cut, the better. And I just do like about three, so I don't have too many pieces of string that I'm working with at one time. And then all you do is tie them in a knot. So think of like that first step when you're tying your shoelace. You're just gonna do that twice on each string. And then you'll move to the next string and repeat the process. And eventually, you'll have all of the fringe along this whole bag done, and all of the knots tied along this bag, and you have an easily accessible litter bag. I hope you enjoyed story time with Westmoreland Cleanways. Maybe you learned something new about litter, or maybe it was just a refresher and a reminder about why it's so important that we don't litter, to keep where we live clean, to protect ourselves and the animals that live here with us. If you have questions, please visit our website, westmorelandcleanways.org. We have a lot of great info there, as well as our email address and phone number. Have a great summer, keep it safe, and keep it clean. Until next time.